Hey there, everybody. Long time no see. Catatomic coming to you from a what was once lab in the Pacific Northwest. Okay, now that that's out of the way, um, we are going to be making soap, which is something that I learned a while ago, melt and pour soap, and I'm going to be telling you a ghost story. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the double boiler thing. We're going to get the water hot. And then we're going to take some of our soap. This is a goat's milk soap. We're going to cut it up on a chopping board with my knife. All right, so while I do this, listen up. So I was born in a town in the San Francisco Bay Area called San Leandro. Um, it was not like a small town, but it was small for the Bay Area. Uh, we had a mall and all that stuff. Um, but I grew up in this house until I was about 19 I lived there. So, uh, it was built in the 1920s, this house. It was a little, little two bedroom thing. Um, nothing too exciting. Uh, my family moved in there, I believe, 1983. Um, well, when I was probably in the second grade, I think it was, I saw a ghost. Uh, I was sleeping. My room wasn't a true room. We're going to pause that. We're going to put our double boiler on top of the water. Get it nice and hot. You can do this in the microwave if you want. Or you can do it on the stove. I like doing it on the stove because it's a little more theatrical than microwaving things. So, still chopping up soap over here. Um, so, when I, as I was saying, when I was in second grade, I saw a ghost. Um, I was laying in bed. Uh, my entryway to my bedroom was... It was, it was kind of a, a weird little area. Um, maybe I'll find a picture. Um... It had a curtain over it because we didn't have uh, three bedrooms and my brother was a teenager and you know boys and girls it's, it's a little difficult to have them share rooms especially when boys are going through certain things so they made me my own room um, and uh, it, the door the entrance to my room was always open well I was laying in bed I woke up something woke me up in the middle of the night uh, and I look in that opening and I see this woman standing there. She was kind of floating off the ground. I, I drew a picture. See, um, she was floating off the ground. She had a peaceful look on her face. She was wearing Victorian clothing, a bonnet. Um, she was very motherly, but she had her hands on her hips and she just kind of looked at me and, and kind of like raised her head like are you okay um scared the piss out of me so <laughs> uh i'm screaming mom slept with mom and dad that night you know it's funny when families compare notes because my mom saw the same thing you know it was like it wasn't it wasn't then so i'm putting the soap cubes in here to melt. You don't want to burn it, so you have to make sure um, that it melts just right. You can't let it get too hot. Um, yes, yeah, so my mom, it, she saw the same thing. I don't remember where she saw her. I think it was, um, it was in her, by her bedroom door, maybe. Uh, but that was her. She seemed to be like a matron of the house. Maybe she was the former owner. Um, I don't, I don't really know. Like the town wasn't like there was a big house or anything there beforehand. It was, uh, cherry orchards. If you look up San Leandro, California, uh, that's where it is. I lived on the unincorporated area, which was built in the twenties. Um, they tend to build these smaller houses. Uh, there was other things that happened in that house. My brother and I, we were like uh, constantly freaking out. Constantly. Like we couldn't just walk from one room to another. No, we had to run. 
So we always felt like something was ch worth chasing us. Um, but there was one thing when my brother and I got to be, uh, older, we, we seemed to, I don't know, have a sixth sense. Um, so the soap's melting. Oop, oh, dripping water everywhere. Shoop. All right. So we're going to check the temperature. You don't want it to get too hot. I can't remember what it was supposed to be, but it's at 70 right now. So we're okay. Um, got my trusty spoon. We're going to start stirring because I think that's enough soap. Um, so anyways, my brother and I saw this thing of a brown lady. Now we don't think it was ever human. It was more like this feeling. Um, little, a little, uh, back information when I was, oh, um, about 13 when I was really starting to find myself, I started dabbling in witchcraft. Now I do, I am still a practicing pagan, but an unknowledged 13 year old who just saw the craft and read a couple of books. I don't, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't really know what a coven was or anything. Um, so I, I invited ghosts to my house. I said, welcome all come in my house. I made a vortex. At least that's what I believe I did. But there was things there that just didn't seem to be human. Oh, uh, my friend, Lindsay from California, she and I bought a Ouija board at one point and started playing with that in the house. And that was a whole nother thing. Oh my goodness. Like there's, there's just so many stories to tell about the, this strange occurrences at this house. Um, so you don't want to stir it too much where it makes bubbles. Bubbles is not good in your soap. Um, sometimes it's just, it, if it's too cool, it'll start to bubble. And you'll know because you'll start getting bubbles like coming up through the sky. Um, where was I? Uh, Ouija board, Ouija board. There was uh, this, this ghost that her and I communicated now. Now I really hope it was real because I wasn't moving it, girl. Um, so if it wasn't me, it would have to be you. Uh, so I'm going to put some harvest spice in here, uh, for, for scent. Uh, oh, I was apparently it leaked all out. So, uh, I wanted to do a fall scent, but, uh, since I didn't check my bottle, the only thing I have laying handy is red cherry. So we'll just do red cherry. I was going to do a, uh, coffee soap, but, uh, I, I just, because I don't, Cherry coffee would smell very good. So we're going to take this. We're going to throw some juicy juice in there. You want enough fragrance oil. I usually eyeball it. You can get, um, you can get information online. I'm not like the best teacher at this kind of stuff. Uh, usually I have a whisk, but I am, uh, not doing that right now. I'm just going to use my handy dandy spoon. Um, so anyways, there was this ghost who claimed to be Tom was was very strange like weird towards me like very inappropriate um and there was one point that her and i were using the ouija board and i started feeling like chest pains and i said tom are you doing anything to me and it said stabbing you well, Lindsay and I just up and leave. We're like, enough of this junk. We are going to leave. Um, so the minute we leave my property, um, right the fence, right where the fence is, uh, it stopped. I stopped feeling the pain. All right, so since this is cherry, we're going to add some red in it. These are probably going to end up being pink because it's goat milk soap, um, which has a white color. Uh, it's great for really creamy things, uh, but this is going to turn pink most likely um so uh woo, and we throw that right on the hot stove good job cat so um that was like some things with the ouija board and then we kind of got bored with it or at least i got bored with it it was too much it was it was almost like an obsession um so uh there was there was other things we felt like there was like a creature that was just kind of 
biting us. Um, it, it was weird. There was there was points where I felt like something walked through me when I was sitting at the uh, desk chair in my uh, dining room. Um, there was just uh, yeah, it was weird. Okay, so you're gonna do your soap. It's all completely melted now, so we can actually pour it in the molds. I have this. Uh, basic pink mold. So I'm just going to fill up as many bars as I can. I'll probably have like two, two bars of soap worth. Um, all right. Sorry about that. I had to delete some things on my, um, phone. Okay. So anyways, I have, it's usually good to have a, a side of your sink cleared out. I left my sink filled with dishes, unfortunately. Um, and then you spill the hot water over the soap. It just makes an easier cleanup. Um, so this house that I grew up in, was it was, it was terrifying. I feel like I was scared. I didn't like going in rooms by myself. There was one point where my parents' room lamp was shaking back and forth. Now, I, this is the San Francisco Bay Area. It could have been an earthquake. I don't know. Um, okay, so the soap is actually sitting in the tray, so I'm going to spray it with, um, this is rubbing alcohol. What it does is if there's any bubbles on top of the soap, it will kill them, so then you have a better product, especially if you're planning on selling them. Um, my, my spray ends up having a scent of rose water because it was a rose water bottle originally. Okay, so this house, 19 years, freaked out, 19 and a half actually of living there. Uh, finally we, we moved. Um, and the, the last, the last day that I was there, I was the last person in that house, uh, from my family. And I used the restroom. As I'm going out, we're in the side of the house. You can see the bathroom, uh, window. And there was the light on. Now I remember turning the light off. Um, but I'm outside and my mom said, the light's on in the bathroom. So I go in there in the house and I turn the light off and I, in the hallway where that awful inhuman creature thing had always been, uh, I felt this like peace, like almost like apologetically the house was saying sorry for scaring you so much. And it was, it was incredibly bizarre, but I felt at peace, uh, though I still do have nightmares about the house, uh, just that, that dark entity. It's very hard to describe. Um, there's a picture of, it was, it was just, there was all kinds of things that happened and it's so hard to just sum up in this little soap making video. Um, so maybe I'll tell you some more next time. Or, uh, we'll see. All right. You stay spooky and have a nice Halloween.